I was sick, sick unto death with that long agony, and when they at length unbound me, I felt that my senses were leaving me. The sentence, the dread sentence of death, was the last of distinct accentuation which reached my ears. After that, the sound of the inquisitorial voices seemed merged in one dreamy, indeterminate hum. I heard no more, yet for a while I saw the lips of the black-robed judges. I saw them fashion the syllables of my name, and I shuddered because there was no sound. So far, I had not opened my eyes. I dreaded the first glance at objects around me. My worst thoughts then were confirmed. The blackness of eternal night encompassed me. I struggled for breath. The atmosphere was intolerably close. But where and in what state was I? And now there came thronging upon my recollection a thousand vague rumours of the horrors of Toledo. Of the dungeons there had been strange things narrated, strange and too ghastly to repeat. A noise attracted their notice. I saw several enormous rats traversing the floor. Even then, while I gazed, they came, hurriedly with ravenous eyes, allured by the scent of the meat. I put forward my arm and shuddered to find that I had fallen at the very brink of a circular pit. I could no longer doubt the room prepared for me by monkish ingenuity and torture. The plunge into this pit I had avoided by the merest of accidents. Having failed to fall, it was no part of the demon plan to hurl me into the abyss, and thus, there being no alternative, a different and milder destruction awaited me. Looking upward, I surveyed the ceiling of my prison. It was a huge pendulum such as we see on antique clocks. Its sweep was, of course, slow. I counted the rushing vibrations of the steel, inch by inch, line by line, down and still, down it came. Down steadily it crept, down certainly, relentlessly down. Down, still unceasingly, still inevitably down. I gasped and struggled at each vibration. I saw that some ten or twelve vibrations would bring the steel in contact with my robe. For the first time during many hours, or perhaps days, I had a thought. With the particles of the oily and spicy viand which now remained, I thoroughly rubbed the bandage wherever I could reach it. Then I lay breathlessly still. The measured movement of the pendulum disturbed the rats not at all. Avoiding its strokes, they busied themselves with the anointed bandage. Plainly, I perceived the loosening of the bandage, and I knew that in one more place it would already be severed. For the moment, at least, I was free. There was a discordant hum of human voices. The French army had entered Toledo. The Inquisition was in the hands of its enemies.